Once again, good morning. With sweet smile. Keep smiling. Again, uh, it takes only 15 muscles in our face when we are smiling. If we are frowning, it will take 65 muscles. Smiles keep you young. So keep smiling, uh, even though sometimes we don't have any uh, teeth already. Uh. Brothers and sisters, we are now in the seventh Sunday in ordinary time. Today's readings, God calls us in a radical way, you know, in two ways. We are called to holiness. And second, we are called to love. We are called to holiness. In the first reading, God said, Be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. Be holy. To become holy, we can concretize this by showing this to our neighbors, by caring those people, even challenge us to care and to love those who hate us. To care to show love to your neighbor as yourself. This is the measurement or the barometer of our love to our neighbor as we love ourselves. To become holy is to put God as a center in our lives. If God always part and center in our daily, daily activities in life, it means that we are making ourselves, putting ourselves into holiness. In the second reading, my dear brothers and sisters, St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, said, Brothers and sisters, do you know that you are the temple of God? And the Spirit of God dwells in you. Do you know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? Just look at your side. Try to look at. Then imagine. The Spirit of God is dwelling in that person. It means, my dear brothers and sisters, that it's and every one of us, we are holy, precious. We are secret, not because we are created by God according to his image and likeness, precisely because God is in you. God is in our heart. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, the church is always in the perspective of protecting the value of life, the sacredness of life, from the very beginning of conception until the last breath of our life. The church is always protecting us. Because again, it's an every one of us. Whatever color, whatever status, whatever situation, whatever position you have in this world nothing can separate us or can make us lower in the eyes of God we are God's perfect creation that's why the challenge for today we are called by God to live life in holiness the second major brothers and sisters God called us to love, not just to our loved ones, 
but even to extend beyond that, to love even those to love our enemies. No? And offer no resistance to one who is evil. It means, my dear brothers and sisters, there is no room for hatred. There is no room for revenge. Instead, we are called to love one another. Our human tendency, we just love to those who love us. We just care to those who cared us. We just extend our love and care within our circle. Again, God called us, go beyond to that usual caring and loving. Love even those who hate you, even those who did wrong to you. And pray for them. No? Pray for them. If you can pray your enemies, it means that you go beyond what is usual in this world. My dear brothers and sisters, to look this perspective, it, not, it is not just about our personal relationship with God and with our brothers and sisters. We can look this in the, into a bigger perspective in this world. Try to imagine the world today. What we need in this world today is love. But if we try to reflect on this, it's totally different, totally opposite. The world today, we are in the situation that we are in chaos. A lot of tension, a lot of hatred, a lot of uncertainties, killing, chaos, no? human destruction. We need love. And that's, that's the only way for us to have peace in this world, to love one another. I did not see any military trucks, military person, personnel marching toward Turkey, bringing their tools to help restore their buildings because of earthquake. But I saw a lot of military vehicles marching towards Ukraine for war. Instead of giving love, bringing destruction, killing each other. I did not see any country making their budget, including poor people, feeding poor, poor people in different countries who are hungry and poor. Instead, they included in their budget for building military weapons, creating military weapons for mass destruction. What for? Different countries try to build their might, their power. What will happen next? Do you think that we are creating a culture of life instead we are, we are being challenged to make this world a beautiful place for us to live, creating, promoting the culture of life. But what people are doing today, they are creating culture of death. Every single bullet means life, means destruction. No. My dear brothers and sisters, just imagine, in the latest survey, we have the total population in the world today is 8 billion people. No? And just, I saw uh, Japan, for example, they are budgeting their military 819 billion. If we just give those money, or amount to create or to build 
a good relationship to everybody. Just one country. No? I think no people in this world feeling hungry. No people in this world what we call homeless. No people in this world, no single person in this world being deprived by their basic needs in life. No? And this is a radical calling of Jesus to each and every one of us. Create love instead of hatred. Love your enemies instead of revenge. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is calling us today no? to love one another. Why these things happen in this world? Precisely because there is no God in them. They don't put God as the center in their lives. If there is God, there is love. There is peace. Because the kingdom, if we talk about the kingdom of God, Jesus said the kingdom of God is not about building any military power. It is about peace. It is about justice. It is about unity. It is about harmony. It is about caring and loving each other. No? Everybody in this world wants this word love, wants peace. But the question is why it is very hard for us to achieve that. Again, because God is not the center in their goal. God is not part of what they are doing. They are trying to build earthly kingdom. And they are proud of that. No? But the question is, after all, what's for? Again, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is challenging us to go beyond what is the usual that people offer in this world. Offer no resistance to one who is evil. Love those who hate you. That's the unconditional love of God for us. Just imagine Jesus, even in his last breath, in this last minute of his life, when he was hanging on the cross, what was the words in his mouth? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And even promise to the thief besides him, you will be with me in paradise today. Even in the last breath of Jesus, he's challenging us to express that love to one another.